So RTX 4000 is right around the corner and I won't be upgrading to it, at least not right away. So let's talk about it. I've got some fairly interesting things to say and as always, links to my sources will be in the description. So I know this is going to sound pretty rich coming from me. I have an RTX 3080 12 gig in my system and I have, you know, upgraded every generation of graphics card at launch since the GTX 570, which launched in 2010. But Nvidia has some serious problems coming and they all feed into each other. So let's start with power draw and power requirements. This is mostly for the high-end GPUs like the RTX 4090 and higher-end RTX 4080s, I suspect. They're, go they're all going to be able to pull 600 watts continuously from the power supply, which puts your system requirement to a 1,000 watt power supply. You know, 1,000 to 1,200 watts is going to be a requirement, not just a recommendation anymore. I know the recommendation right now is 850 watts, but add a high-end CPU in with your high-end GPU and power the rest of your system and you're easily up to consuming 850 watts continuously. And they don't make a 900 watt power supply. So that's a, that's a 1000 or 1200 watt unit very quickly. So on top of this, the new GPUs are going to be using the ATX 3.0 standard, which is not fleshed out yet. Yes, you can use an older power supply with the newer cards, but the power supply won't be able to communicate with the GPU and it may draw too much power tripping protections. If your power supply is built well, and if it's not built well, that too much draw turns into a fire hazard. And that with the fact that the ATX 3.0 standard uses a 12 pin connector on the GPU to multiple eight pins on the power supply, so it's going to be adapted. And if you use eight pins with the little buddy connector on it, it's completely possible to try and draw or to try and draw that 800 or 600 plus watts off of a single rail on the power supply, which even with good protections might just kill the power supply because the peak draw is supposed to be you know, three times what the sustained draw is. So trying to draw 800, you know, 1800 watts from a 1000 watt gold rated power supply, even for a split second is either going to trip protections, maybe set something on fire. We don't know what it's gonna do because these power supplies that we have now aren't rated for it. So you're basically factoring in the cost of a new power supply with a new GPU. And these new power supplies, because we don't have good manufacturing processes yet, are going to be more expensive. So your $1,600 RTX 4090 just became a $2,000 purchase. Because now you're spending $400 on a you know decent 1,000 watt gold rated power supply that sports the ATX 3.0 standard. But moving on, with the launch of RTX 3000, we saw power delivery issues with the 3070s and above being outright killed by certain games, mainly New World, of which I still haven't played because of that, and it has other issues. But anyway, those power delivery issues that killed cards were a result of poor quality components. Same thing happened, or not, not the same exact thing, but poor quality components killing more graphics cards and motherboards. I think it was the RX 580 at launch and it was killing motherboards for drawing too much power from the PCI Express slot on the motherboard, which is precisely why the RX 6500 XT has a TDP of 80 watts instead of 75 watts because it can draw 75 watts from the motherboard and requires supplemental power. So the problem with the RX 580s, I think I think it was the 580s, is they were drawing exactly 75 watts from the motherboard, and on cheaper motherboards, they weren't, you know, did it, like yes, they were designed for it, but they weren't built properly and couldn't handle it, so you were killing components. The RX 6500 XT fixed this with a extra power connector. 
But those poor quality components, you know, they might not be present on every video card or every power supply, just the more affordable ones. And just to be clear, I'm not worried about the motherboards this generation, just GPUs and power supplies. And with new standards, everything, you know, new standards and inflation, the prices of everything are going to go up. It's just how it's going to be. Things are going to get significantly more expensive right now. Um, and people, you know, me, ex like for example, I'm going to try and save money when I build computers, so I'm going to get cheaper quality components. And the problem with doing that is right now we're pushing the limits of what our components can do. So if we get cheaper quality components, you know, more inexpensive components, there's a good chance we're going to kill them. Just because they're not be they're not built to handle what we need them to, and we just need to hope that the protections are good enough to keep everything running well. This will be mostly important just to the higher end cards. The are you know the 4070 and below probably won't have this issue, and this is probably not going to be a huge issue. It's just you know me being cautious. Another reason I won't be jumping on the RTX 4000 bandwagon at launch is pricing. We're expecting to see another absolutely insane performance jump just like we did from 2000 to 3000. But we're also expecting to see another price jump. The RTX 3080 had an MSRP 700 American. The 4080 is going to have that of 1200. That's almost a double and no, I'm not counting the 12 gig 4080 because they're clearly separate cards and were intended to be such. Combine the price hike with the increased performance, well, the RTX 4080 will certainly push more frames than the 3080. The price per frame will likely be the same or around the same. So it honestly won't be a meaningful upgrade seeing as how my 3080 is already maxing out games at 4K 144 FPS. I'm not saying all games, but certainly the ones I play. So in conclusion, if you combine all of the things I outlined in this video, being higher power requirements to the point where it is required that you buy a new power supply that hasn't been produced yet, so we have no idea what the quality of those will be, new standards that are going to have durability issues because, well, they are new standards, combine all of that for one package that is a very expensive GPU that doesn't present a good value. That is exactly why I will be waiting to purchase an RTX 4080 until either the 5080 releases on the timeline of another two years or such, or I can find a 4080 16 gig for less than $900. Because the 4080 16 gig should have either been the 4080, the only 4080, or the 4080 Ti. In this generation, I'm going to focus on value builds for you guys and showing you how to get the most out of your PC for the least amount of money. See what we can do to help everybody through this incoming recession. But anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Um, I know that this is another Sunday video and I don't normally do these, but last one went over pretty well. So I think we might try and do these every Sunday. If I can, don't expect to see these every Sunday, but still expect to see the Wednesday videos. Um, anyway, I will see you guys in the next one.